welcome back to another video lecture and today we discuss on the topic weathering different types of weathering so in the previous class we already discussed the terms is the scope of this geology in civil engineering field and also just started what do you mean by weathering and also the different types of weathering so in the case of different types of weathering the first one is mechanical weathering so actually this weathering means the disintegration of rock particles into very small particles isn't it so this happened due to certain process like this mechanical or chemical or biological so here if you observe the diagram this is a rock and after due to this some processes this weathered products are obtained in this way this is the parent rock let us assume this is a parent rock and due to certain changes occurring in our nature this parent rock is converted to some products that means some very small finer particles or some particles okay so in this case this first one or the first thing which is going to happen due to frost action okay so it can be clearly you can visualize from this diagram so if you observe in this case this frost action this waters enter into this rock okay if some joints are occur over the rock this water enter into this rock or the, into this joints then what happens the water freezes and then expands and some pressures being adopted to these rocks okay so such that this rocks will expand then what happens after freezing the <coughs> the rock fragments break off and forms some very smaller particles okay once again repeat this frost action is going to happen in this way that is the water enter into some joints of the rock and some expansion is going to happen due to the pressure and after that it is going to break down and converted into very small particles okay so that's the case regarding this frost action so this is the diagram if you it will give some more clarity regarding this frost action after due to some this water enter into some joints and some expansion and pressure happens and it produces very small particles so that's one first thing okay one of the mechanical weathering reason okay then moving on to the next case okay so this is the diagram showing those frost actions okay means after this water enter into joints and it produces this final particles that is discussed here then coming to the next case that is due to the thermal effect or temperature changes okay this disintegration is going to happen due to the temperature effects if the temperature variations occur then there is a changes or disintegration happens then that is called the thermal effects or the weathering happened due to thermal effect or temperature changes so that's the case so if you observe the diagram you will get some more clarity regarding this temperature changes actually in this case also the layers are or the layers over the rock may disintegrate or converted into smaller particles after due to the temperature variations happen over the earth okay so that's the case regarding this temperature change so here there is a term called s flowation in a thick rock body or where the rock is layered these are the upper layers that get affected moisture most due to the temperature variation okay so if the rock surface the upper layers of the rock surface get more connected with the atmosphere and obviously this peeling off happens over the upper layer then only the lower layers will happen so that's phenomena is called this s flowation okay then another 
feature or another thing that is called unloading. The same thing, the development of fractures in confined rock ma masses is attributed to removal of overlying rock cover due to prolonged erosional work of other agencies. So here also, the disintegration happens due to the some erosional works means some erosional soil erosion related activities are happening over to the uh, rock surface. So here you can observe this the unloading the first of all the development of fractures then the removal of overlying rocks. Then they expand upwards and joint develops and divide them into sheets. So actually in this case they are converted into some sheets okay some layers occurs and it is going to be happened or this disintegration is going to happen okay that is regarding this unloading so in the case of mechanical weathering first one is occurs due to frost action the water enter into the joints then expansion or spread due to the pressure happens and the disintegration is going to happen next one is temperature effect temperature effect then the last one is unloading in this case, this temperature effect, this exploration is also going to happen. This exploration also going to happen. So you can observe the diagram clearly here. Exploration, how it is. This peeling of each layer, the upper layers are peeled off. So that is example. Okay. So while writing, you have to draw the diagram. With the help of diagram, if you write down, it will be very clear and you will get good marks. Okay, that's it. So that's related with this mechanical weathering. Then coming to the next case that is chemical weathering. In the case of chemical weathering what is going to happen? The breakdown as a result of chemical reactions. So you know the term indicates if some chemical reactions occurs then the breakdown or the disintegration happens then that condition is called the chemical weathering. So this is also occurring due to certain phenomena like solution then hydration, hydrolysis, oxidation, all those things. Some chemical reactions, okay. Some related with some chemicals attack to the rocks. Certain time period, if this is not happening in a single day or two or more days, this is happening throughout some period of time. The process by which rock is dissolved in water influenced by pH and temperature. When water becomes saturated, chemicals may precipitate out forming. Okay, so some in the case of this solution, some uh, if rock is in, uh, dissolved in water or some attack of water, okay, so that happens and this leads to the disintegration. Then coming to the hydration, here also, the attachment of water molecules to crystalline structure of a rock causing expansion and weakness. And here in the case of hydrolysis, combination of hydrogen and oxygen in water with rock to form new substances. And here the addition of oxygen or it is dissolved in uh, relation with re reacted with the oxygen content. Okay. In these all cases, the all the cases, some reactions is happening with the respect to some other chemicals, with the different chemicals or with the some natural phenomena or natural chemicals attack. And which leads to the formation of or which leads to the disintegration of this rock. This is another case when carbon dioxide interacts chemically with the minerals creating curves. Okay, this is an example for carbonation if the attack with the carbon. So as the name indicates with the different names uh, the attack of this chemical reaction is happening. Okay, so it is clearly explained in this lecture that is how this solution attack or how this hydration and hydrolysis happens certain equations are also mentioned okay so you can go through one or two equations and study out so actually you have to go through the actually this chemical reactions and how this attack is going to happen different reactions happen happen in this case okay so that is regarding this uh, chemical and one more thing this spheroidal for weathering so that's shown here into some spheroidal blocks as the shape 
okay after this weathering happens and the formation is uh, going to happen in the shape of some spiroidals okay okay so these are examples then last one that is going to be the biological weathering the main reasons that is the roots split rocks apart then quarrying then burrowing animals so these are the some of the reasons behind this biological weathering okay the points is mentioned here are okay this is exam the roots is due to the roots is over the rocks this also related to this uh, weathering okay this also then this is an example for the biological weathering okay then the role of plants and the organisms so here this man also is an attacker is the greatest destroyer of rocks he has been breaking them since the very beginning for some purposes okay isn't it we are converting these rocks we are break down these rocks for our purpose also so that also leads to the weathering or this disintegration of rocks into very small particles okay so finally concluding this weathering happens due to this three process that is mechanical chemical and biological in the case of mechanical it is happen due to the certain process like frost action then temperature changes then then unloading okay then coming to the chemical due to the chemical attack okay chemical attack means it to happens due to the carbonation due to carbon extra attack then oxidation then hydration hydrolysis likewise then coming to the biological the role of plants and organisms and also human beings are the reasons for this biological weathering so that's the thing then some of the factors affecting the weathering like nature of the rock okay How, what about the rock nature that's that's also uh, affect this weathering then climatic conditions okay the different regions is or different locations have different climatic conditions and that also affect the rock then physical environment how whether this where the location of this rock surface so that's all involved in the weathering conditions okay so that's the cases then the end products of weathering you can classify them into two LUV and deluvium. So, the LUV means the end product lie over and above parent rock. Means, if the weathering happens, the weathering happens, the disintegration of particles is lying around that parent rock. Then, such an example is called or such a condition is called LUV. And the deluvium means that has been moved to some distance due to some certain weathering, uh, some agents, gravity, uh, rainwater, or likewise, these disintegrated particles move to and uh, settle down at some other places. Then, last one, regolith, used to express all weathered materials. You can classify them into this regolith. So, that's the case. Then, so that's all related with the different products of weathering and also related with this weathering then then coming to another important topic that is soil profile okay how can you classify this soil layers different layers actually this can be classified into four layers that is a zone b zone c zone and d zone <clears throat> what about the condition of this a zone or what are the specialties of this B zone or what likewise in the case of A zone or the upper layer what about this upper layer it is made up of entirely of completely weathered soil that may be supporting vegetable cover or likewise okay if you observe our earth surface okay our earth surface and the topmost soil is very good for the cultivation purpose isn't it so so clearly it is mentioned that all the top surface it is going to be it is very good for the cultivation purpose then coming to the next layer that is the zone b mixed composition 
partial of soil and partial of weathered rocks okay in this case there will be soil content also some weathered rocks materials also will be there and the sown seed is part soil free zone and has enough evidence that rocks at this level are already attacked by weathering and the rocks are not disintegrated or decayed okay in the next level the rocks are somewhat strong okay so that is mentioned here it is shown here the last d zone it is going to be completely rock part particles okay so if you if you want to observe or if you want to visualize this statement please go and dig out some portion in your surface in the initial case in the top of soil is very good for the cultivation and if you go to some more depth it is going to be some uh, rock particles very minute rock particles will be there and if you go to some more depth the rock particles are increasing and if you go to some more deep it is going to be full of rock particles in the case of digging of wells if you observe this you can clearly observe this statement so that's regarding the soil profile four sources a zone b zone c zone and d zone usually in exams with the help of a neat diagram you have to explain these different sources okay so i hope it is clear then what about the importance of this engineering uh, engineering in this weathering or what about the weathering in involved in this engineering so you can observe that how this helps to what extent the area for a proposed project has already been physically deteriorated by cumulative effects of weathering process op operate in that area and also likely affect the weathering on the construction material proposed to. so if you are going to take a project if you are going to take a construction works how this weathering weathering helps or uh, it gives some idea regarding the whether this site is good for the construction or likewise so that's a advantage of this weathering or it will give a remarkable opinion to whether to construct a building or whether to do our project in that particular site so that's a case regarding this uh, this engineering purpose or engineering cases in this weathering case okay so today we discuss certain points like weathering and different types of weathering like mechanical chemical and biological and uh, then coming to the different products and products of weathering like alluvium deluvium all those things is then coming to the soil profile soil profile means it can be classified into four a zone b zone c zone and d zone how this going how each layer consists of different particles is then what about the influence of this weathering in the engineering so these are the points is discussed in this class so please try to write down those points is in your own words is okay so i hope the section is clear and with this we wind up today's section thank you